All right, guys, Dior's here, so I guess you could say this is going to be Fire Baked Cobbler Part 1. I'm going to show you guys a simple recipe of how I make my Fire Baked Cobblers, and then the next video we will bake this thing over a fire. Well, not directly over a fire, it'll be over the hot coals of a fire. Anyhow, so things you're going to need this happen you're gonna need a cast iron Dutch oven I've got a little small one right here 10 inch cast iron Cabela's Dutch oven you're gonna need either stick butter or stick margarine I went with the stick margarine just because I got this over at the Dollar Tree so it didn't cost me any money uh, you know, I mean, didn't cost, I should say it didn't cost me any money. I should say it didn't cost me hardly any money. So, that's what I want. Um, you also need cake mix. Preferably either white or yellow. I mean, I suppose you could use chocolate, but I don't know how good that's going to taste, to be honest. So, I would stick with either white or yellow. Yellow is my favorite. Get two boxes of uh, cake mix. You'll need two cans of pineapple. It doesn't matter if it's the little little uh, slices or if it's the tidbits or if it's the chunks. I prefer chunk, but this is all I can find at the Dollar Tree. So two cans of that. You'll need. You can either go with a single can or two cans of pie filling, your flavor. I preferably prefer uh, blueberry and cherry, but fortunately the Kroger store was all out of cherry, so I ended up picking up the strawberry one, so we'll see how that tastes because I've never had it with strawberry. I prefer the cherry just because of the tart. You also need some sort of canola spray. I'm using my spray that you know, doubles as a uh, seasoning spray to keep my cast irons from getting all rusty. And a beat up roll of aluminum foil. All right, let's go through this real quick here. So, right here, you got two options you could coat this with uh, butter if you wanted to. I'm just going to, whoops, get this uh, inside of this thing, my cast iron coated with some uh, canola oil. The next step is to go ahead and line the inside of your cast iron with uh, aluminum foil or aluminum foil for you Brits out there. Uh, we'll, we'll do a jump cut for this. And boom. Just like that, TV fucking magic. Alright. Now, this probably seems a little counterintuitive that I sprayed that uh, cast iron first before, and then turned around and later on added aluminum foil. There's, some reason, there's a little bit of reason behind that. Um, this aluminum foil... There will be leak by, guaranteed, 100% of the time, because I've never not had leak by. So, yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of leak by. I'm just going to, for good measure, spray the aluminum foil just a little bit. Again, extra measure to keep stuff from sticking, because uh, the corners will get a little burnt, a little crispy, but overall, it should be all right. Everything's hinging on the fact you don't, you know, put this on an open flame. Because it's really not supposed to go on an open flame. This is supposed to go on hot coals from a fire. Alright, let me open up my dang container margarine here. Boy, this thing really don't want to open up. All right, we will tear both sides for good measure. And 
I guess we will tear a third side for even more good measure because these things are apparently glued to the box, the curtain. All right. Take my stick margarine. Yeah, this is a favorite cobbler of mine that I like to make, especially when I'm going camping, camping with the guys. We aren't really backpacking, we're just doing primitive camping out in the middle of the woods, so. Yeah, let's take my butter knife, I'll slice it up in a little half teaspoon slices. I actually might add a third stick. Typically you only need two. I'm gonna probably just add a third just for good measure. Close to the edge here. You get the idea. I'm going to continue slicing this and put more butter in. More TV magic. All right. For this next step. Oh, hang on. Let me pause that real quick. Forgot the dang can opener. All right, next step. I'm gonna open up a can of pineapple. And juices and all. Pour in the bottom here. I'm gonna put the pineapple, some pineapple chunks in the bottom because I want it to taste a little bit like a pineapple upside down cake as far as the crust goes on the bottom. You can do the same for the top. And get some cake mix. Yeah, it's your handy dandy pocket knife. And just liberally pour that all over the bottom. Try to get that spread out nice and even if you can. Still a little bit left. And yeah, we'll start with the blueberry. Oh, nice. Pull top busted right off. All right. Butter knife saves the day.
Oh, getting a little bit of a cake crust in there. All right. Let's see. You know what? We'll throw a can of pineapple in the middle here. Juice and all. Juice and all. I need to save some of them uh, pineapple chunks. I don't want all of them to go in there. I meant for some. All right, the rest can stay. All right. Let's see if we can get this one to pull open without the top busting off. that out if we can all right you could use homemade pie filling for this if you wanted to I've made homemade pie filling but it's a lot of work for a dessert that's meant to be something simple I hope the first ain't dry, drowning everybody out. Pour half, half this mix in. And then remember that pineapple I saved? Whoop. Try to get the bacon this here crust on top a little bit. Oh, it's a good thing I brought brought out the pine saw and the paper towels. I knew this was gonna be messy. All right. Slice up the rest of your butter. Now lay it on top. You probably use tub butter for this, but stick butter works best. Stick butter or stick margarine.
Alright, I'll pause this for a bit. And just like that, the, the uh, preparation process is done. So, just put your lid on. And she's ready to go on the fire. Stay tuned for the second part. That's all I got. I'm Dior's. I'm out. See you later.